Hi, this is Dave from Race Coordinator. Um, I wanted to do a quick video of uh, demonstrating what live the, what the live web updates uh, are and what this is. It's a new feature from uh, that's coming in RC soon. It'll be available in the Scorpius RMS, the Race Coordinator, Race Coordinator digital application, and of course the Race Coordinator analog. Uh, what I'm going to use is I'm going to show you show you basically all the different features that we currently have using the analog program. But again, they all work with the digital and the uh, Scorpius RMS, they just look a little different. Before I begin the demo, uh, I just want to take, say, take a quick second to say thank you to Cy, Slingshot, and Dieter. Um, all your guys' hard work, This without it, it, without your hard work, this never would have happened. You guys, you guys did everything that I would never in a million years have had time to do, so I appreciate all the help and, and hope everybody likes what you guys have done, because I do, and, and I think it's possibly the coolest feature in an RMS yet. I really hope it takes off. Um, so without further ado, the Live Web Updates is um, an HTML JavaScript client that is capable of talking to Race Coordinator as it is running a live race. What does that mean? Well, it means that from any, P any device you have in the universe that has a web browser, you can pretty much view the live race that's going on, um, assuming your network is configured properly. Um, in this case, I'm, I'm not making this current race available to the World Wide Web, but it is available to any computer on my local area network or LAN um, in my house. And so I've got, at one point I had one, two, three, four, five devices I think set up. Um, because this is about the seventh time I've tried to make this video, I had to shut down my MacBook Pro because it ran out of battery and, and I hate that thing anyway. So, um, so we're going to lose a few devices, but really they're just add-ons to show how cool it is and that, that you can really do it. I think you get the idea because what I'm going to show you right now is my Windows desktop um, showing the live race updates in Chrome, uh, which is Google's browser, which is what you're looking at right here. Um, I'm also going to show you an iPad and then an iPod Touch, so we're going to get a, a, a varying amount of browser sizes so you can really see what you can do with this thing and, and hopefully this will give you guys some ideas and, and, and see what we can do. So. What we're currently looking at is um, heat 25 of 27. It has ended. Um, I'm running a, a fairly large race just to demonstrate that it can handle so much data and stuff within RC. Um, so you're looking at the end of the heat and its results. Um, you can't see it really well because this video is terrible, but um, yellow one, green came in second, red came in third, and, and blue came in fourth. The main thing you can see pretty clearly here is that there's two screens. The main, the large screen with the graph that's the live weight race update. That's all HTML and JavaScript code. The bottom right hand corner, what looks sort of like a pit, that's actually the RC window. It should look familiar to everybody. Um, the graph is showing the lap, lap to position graph is what that is. And what that gives you is it tells you where all the lead changes were and when things were being, when position was being battled for in a particular heat. So in this particular heat, you can see that it started out with a quick battle on the left hand side where Blue took a quick lead for a brief moment and then Green retook it and maintained it for a while. And then towards the middle of the graph, in, in this area here, um, you can see that there was a quite a big battle between basically all the racers where positions changed. Red went from first to fourth, then back to first. Um, and then ultimately it ended with, with yellow and green battling for first and second, and blue and, and red having a small little battle right here for third and fourth with with the standings coming out the way they did. Now one thing you can do is, you know, this is HTML and JavaScript. You can literally script anything you, you can imagine um, and you have as much access to the RC data as you could ever want. So one thing you can do is you can click on this graph and now you've noticed it's switched. This is the lap time graph. So what this will show you is fastest lap times. For example, yellow put in a bunch of fast laps here. Its fastest lap time came somewhere around here. Um, I don't know if you can see that cursor, but it's somewhere around here. Um, the intent with this, I ran this in demo mode, so it's not really a good good idea, but or good good visualization. But the intent with this graph would be that you can you'll be able to see where a driver went off, see their best lap times, their worst lap times, that kind of stuff pretty quickly within the heat. Um, we threw this in as much because it's cool as because you basically get it for free with the live web updates. It's really trivial stuff once you have a graph implementation at all. It's pretty easy to do. Um, the next thing I want to show you real quick is that we added in the ability to become a race director through the live web updates. Now you'll notice I've been clicking on this HTML page so the, so the RC window which I told you was down here has disappeared because I've switched focus so I'm going to get rid of it for a minute. We've enabled this red flag to be a button which is essentially a call button. If I push that it will do whatever the call button would do in a normal RC, if you did it normally on an RC track which in the current state I'm in it will advance me to the next heat. So let's do that real quick. 
and you can see it advanced me. So now I'm on the next heat already. I'm on heat 26 and 27. You can't read it. There's an auto start count counter counting down right there, which I'm going to use. Um, I'm just going to use the main race director screen to actually cancel. Um, but I was I advanced to it because I hit that button. If I hit this, if I hit the flag again now, it'll start the race just like any normal RC thing. Now you might be thinking, well, that's really bad because that means anybody with access to these web pages can become a race director and control the race through a call button. The race director functionality is password protected. You have to know what the password is set on the server to be able to do it on the client. And and so just for those non-technical people, the server is our race coordinator itself. The client is this web page here you're viewing or any of the web pages that you'll be viewing here. So so not just anybody can do it as long as the server itself, as long as the owner of race coordinator changes the password and only gives it to those people or those devices that they want to be able to control them. Um, with that said, we do have a big old red button. The screen was done. It's, it seems really simple and seems kind of funny, but it's intended to, get, to be able to give out to the different um, uh, track marshals. You could you could totally give them a smartphone or an iPad or something and all they have to do when there's an incident on the track is hit the big button on the touch screen and boom the, the, the yellow flag comes out, the race is stopped and everything's under control so you no longer need to worry about wiring track buttons uh, track call buttons. You could totally use this web interface in any any smartphone with a uh, any smartphone or any, any, any device with a browser basically. Um, so Let's get let's get to something a little bit more interesting. Let's let's start running the race. So again, I hit the flags and it activated it, and you can see the countdown happening here. You can see the countdown here, and now the race is going. Um, see, hopefully on this screen, I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but they're pretty much in complete lockstep. Um, the web pages can be set to update as frequently as they want. The server, the RC server, eventually will be able to throttle that updating if they want to. But for now, it's completely unlimited. So if you get a mean client they can do some damage, but um, for the most part, race coordinator is pretty durable. I mean, we haven't been able to, to make it even notice that any number of clients have, have been there and have attached, so um, all good. So you can see it's building out a new graph because this heat is in progress and it's updating as the laps come in. The audio you're listening to is coming from the desktop web page, not RC itself. I've actually muted RC, so it's not actually playing the audio. It's the web page that's doing it. Um, the audio does not work on mobile devices. That's a limitation of the mobile devices themselves. I'm looking into workarounds for that, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, which is tragic, really, to be honest. Um, I was really hoping to be able to take advantage of mobile device um, audio, but very likely I'm not going to be able to. So again, um, this heat's running out of time, so let's just pause it real quick. And You can see we just went to a yellow. Um, so what you can see here, again, is just the graphs. Now I'm going to take you, give you a quick tour of some of the other stuff we have. So. Um, up here in the top we have a heat list and it's really hard for me to control this and the camera but we have a heat list you can't see it but you can tell how how the, how the lane colors are all there this is a list of every heat that that's that's in our, in this current race now this is a very big race so there's 27 of them uh, if i scroll zoom in way on the bottom you'll see the 27th 26th these races have not or sorry the, the last one has not been run so there's no data for it just the names the 26th one has been run and it gives you the current standings. This is a live screen as well as all the screens are. So if the race were actually not paused right now, it would be updating and showing you new, uh, showing you the new, you know, standings and whatnot as they go. Um, very simple screen, but very useful um, for the system. Again, another screen that we have is the race results screen. This is a, this is very similar to the leaderboard or the race results thing within the within the main race day screen of RC itself. It's got tons and tons of data. Um, you, you know, and, and it's completely scrollable. So that's one of the nice things about HTML JavaScript. You can totally, it, it doesn't have the limitation that the XAML files have where, where I'm not, like for example, the leaderboard on the XAML files is set to like 20 drivers. 21 drivers will not show up. The 21st one is just gone. With, with the HTML JavaScript, you can code it in such a way that it'll just pick up every driver no matter, you could have 100 drivers, you could have two drivers. It'll show all of them, as many or as few as you have. And that's, fan, that's, that's a really fantastic thing. Um, the final thing I wanted to show you on, on with this stuff is basically that all of the names, whenever you see them, they're hyperlinks. And so what we did is we set up a page that is the drive, what we call the driver detail view, and that's this view. Um, what you're looking at is at the top, and I, I know you can't see the numbers, but at the top what you're seeing is each one of the driver's lanes that, he's, that he or she has raced in. So in this case, this driver's race in the pants has driven in four, on, on, in four different heats on four different lanes, red, yellow, blue and green in that order. 
Um, it gives you the position, the lap count, the average laps, and the best lap time. I think you can see it now. And over there is an asterisk. Um, what that asterisk? So that's all the information for the. For, that's a summary of the of the drivers. Um, basically the drivers' heat data. Um, it also gives you these four graphs down here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see the cursor moving, but but each of these little these bars here that I've just zoomed in on the first one, each one of those is the individual heats graphs. The gray area is the driver's best lap time. The blue area is the driver's average lap time. And the intent of the screen is to try to, at a quick glance, tell the driver which ones, which lanes that they raced on and which ones were their best. The asterisk indicating what what this particular JavaScript um, has interpreted as their best, and it's based purely on, on the total number of laps that, that the driver got. But the graphs will also show it. I mean, you can see it's very subtle in this one, but you can see that that here, this is the heat three, and it is lower, um, slightly lower than the guy next to it here and the guy next to it here, so it's clearly slightly faster than those two laps. And so for, for race formats that allow drivers to pick um, pick their lanes in the next heat, that can be a very valuable and very powerful thing. Um, my iPad just quit on me. It went quiet. Okay, so real quick, I want to just show you the iPad. Um, so I've just panned over and it's lying here. Um, let me let me rerun this race real quick. Let's get it running again, just so you can see that it, it it's doing all the things. So you can see it's counting down. You'll notice audio has stopped. That's because right now in the HTML files, only the live screen shows audio, and I've switched off of that. So I'm going to switch back to that real quick, so you'll get audio. Um, but you can see this is an iPad. It really is. It's just the, the cable there is just plugged in so that I don't run out of battery. But um, and it can do all the same things. Um, it can do all the normal things an iPad can do. I can I can change the zoom levels. Really hard to do with a camera, but you can see I've started to zoom in on things. So if you can't see something, now you can. I didn't move the camera, I zoomed in on the iPad. You can pinch it down and, and pop it back to where it belongs. You can also view the race results. You can view any any of the pages um, that you want, you know, that, that we currently have. Scroll them up, scroll them down, the whole thing. So the iPad works just great. It's, it's actually a, a quite, it's a very adequate display. You could... I'd love to see some track putting an iPad at every driver station because and, and leave it at a touch, you know, all that information. Um, but you could also use them for, um, you know, for whatever, um, for smaller displays around the track, whatever. Um, they're all wireless, obviously, so it'd be pretty cool. Um, that little click you heard was me waking up my iPod Touch. I don't know if you're familiar with one of these, but it's essentially the size of a phone. Um, it's probably a little smaller than a phone, to be honest. And this is the last thing I wanted to show you real quick. Um, so you can see it's in my hand. I'm holding it between my two fingers. Um, so this device is basically the smallest thing we support, really. Um, but it again is showing. It, this is showing a, a new screen that I haven't shown you before, which is what we call the driver station screen. And the driver station screen is a summary of a specific driver's information. So for digital, this would be a driver ID screen. Um, and the intent here is that you could put this at a driver station, or a driver could be holding on to it while they're racing. And at a glance, they see information that only pertains to them. So on this particular graph, you can see their name, um, what position they're in in the top. You can get their lap count. That that lap that time field is the last time of um, the last lap time. You can get gap information from between me and that particular and, and, and the leader. You can get my best lap time. And then there's two meters. If this was a fuel race, the left meter, which you can't see, I don't know. Um, the left meter um, would be fuel, and, and it would be a fuel meter, and going and going down as a driver runs low on fuel. And the right meter is the how much time is left in the heat, basically, or, or lap count if, it, if it's a lap based race. So you can get all this quick glance information. So if you're at a long stretch, you can take a quick look down versus trying to find your information amongst all of this data here, for example. So it's mostly meant for a quick reference, quick view. Um, so that you can figure out, you know, just all the information that you want. So, um, I think that's everything I wanted to show you. Um, the last thing I actually, one more thing I wanted to show you. I'm sorry, this video is getting long. I'm, I know I'm yappy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to close out Race Coordinator actually. So I'm going to terminate all this stuff now. Um, so this screen should look familiar to you. I'm going to maximize it so hopefully it's more readable. Um, I want to show you really quickly how easy it is to set up the web server. So, so here you go. Um, there's a small little dialog here. Um, trying to make it bigger. I don't know if you can read this or not, but there's very few settings here. There is the enable button. You select what port you want to run on. This is a very network thing to do. 8080 will almost 
always for almost everybody be the be the right port or a working port rather. Um, Server-based directory is where the HTML and JavaScript files live. The default page is the page to use if a user if, if a client connects to it and doesn't uh, and doesn't specify a page. So it, it's basically the home page. You know, it's it ends up being that library screen. Um, then there's a server cache size, which is is um, an optimization thing. Um, you know, you can set that to 10, 50, whatever, and that way if a file's requested more than once, it'll be in memory rather than going to disk, which helps improve performance on within race coordinator itself. And then, as I mentioned, an in-the-clear race director password. So my current password is test. Hope you don't, you don't try to hijack my races now. Um, so I don't think it gets any simpler than this to set up. Um, that's the configuration within RC. Um, there are more complexities in terms of setting up the local network. Um, and I'm, that's going to be beyond the scope of anything I do, but it's basically anybody that can get on your local area network can access your races. Um, the owner of the network will have to open up firewalls, specifically that port there that you set there, they'll have to forward. And this is all set up. I've got in the readme file, I've got links to Microsoft pages on how to, how to forward those ports through the firewalls, you know, to, to disable firewall settings. Um, not disable the firewalls, but to uh, to punch holes through the firewalls so that people can do this. Um, at a minimum, even if you don't adjust your firewalls or you don't even have a local area network, you can always use something called localhost. And on the same computer that's running Race Coordinator, you can run all these web pages. So if you like the HTML JavaScript better than the XAML files, the stuff that Race Coordinator currently comes with, or if you want to make your own HTML J JavaScript, um, you can always use those and replace basically the main race day screen with your own stuff just for your local screen and that will work too. And that will work with no no changes basically to your network at all. You don't need a network, you don't need anything. That will work out of the gate. But to do the different devices like the iPad and the iPod Touch and my Mac and, and whatever else, you would actually have to open up, you'd have to change firewall settings or it just will not work. Um, anyways, I've taken up enough of your time, I apologize. Um, Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, look for it soon. I'll be posting on the forums when it's uploaded to the website and when the builds are ready that support this fully. So thanks a lot. And again, uh, can't can't mention this enough. Thank you, Sai. Thank you, um, Slingshot. Thank you, Dieter. You guys, you guys made this happen. Thanks.